this is going to be a very special video for me. Because today I will do something I have never done before. I will show you everything. My setups, my fish, my working area, my fish room. I recently had a feeling that I owe this kind of video to all of you and I decided to do it as a thank you for the incredible support, all the comments, encouragement, your stories and great advices. And on top of this, I think it can address some of the doubts you might have about having multiple aquariums or even building your own fish rooms. Let me explain what I mean. Before we dig into details, I want to make few things clear. My name is Matt and I don't consider myself to be a YouTuber. I'm a fish keeper and I happen to make videos about my passion. I do that to promote this wonderful hobby, give some advice and share my experience. And this is why I usually don't make very long videos. YouTube is not my job. I just want to help you to answer some specific questions you might have and show you how I build my tanks so you can steal some ideas, get some inspiration or maybe learn a few tricks. And I talk about this because I want to send a message. A message that you can have something like that wall in your house. If you are worried that having multiple tanks always requires huge room or basement full of hoses, buckets and water everywhere, no, it doesn't. It can look nice, clean and relaxing. This room is also my office. This is where I work, so it needs to be presentable. It cannot be loud and messy. And this is also where I can edit my videos in my free time and create setups that you can see on my channel. But now let's focus on this wall. First thing I want you to notice is that I often place pieces of hardscape right next to my tanks. It makes them look even better as long as I continue with the theme of the tank. So, in case of this Iwagumi at the bottom, I placed the same rocks next to it. But next to the tank full of driftwood, I placed some spiderwood pieces. It all looks consistent and makes the entire wall even better in my view. And of course, the entire room changes over time, so what you can see now is the situation out of today and will possibly change in near future. For example, I recently gave away a lot of my fry, so took down some of my fry tanks. But more breeding projects are coming, so they will be getting back here very soon. Okay, but I promised you a tour, so let's get to it. And at the end, we will have a small quiz, so you can decide which one of these is the best. Okay, I will start from this section where I keep my two nano tanks. Let's start from this Iwagumi styled nano at the bottom. I'm gonna be straight with you, this tank is one of my best. I absolutely love how it's working and despite being around 6 months old, it's super clean. I mean look how clean those rocks are, it's just amazing. And the carpet? It's super green and healthy as well. Since I published a build video about this tank in March, it only got better. Look at the comparison. I thought it looked good, but now it looks just amazing. By the way, I will link all the build videos for my tanks in the description, so you will be able to find them easily, but after you've watched this one. What was changed here in this tank is the inhabitants. Chili rasboras that were here moved out and cherry shrimp moved in, exactly as planned. And they are also doing great. You can see already some babies, their colors look good and I have no unexpected deaths. 
So yes, it's a very successful nano tank for me. Right above that Iwagumi, I keep my dark forest tank, or autumn tank as I call it. This one is also doing very good, it's also very clean and healthy. It's a bit younger than the previous one, around 4 months now. The only problem with it is the fact that I placed my pygmy quarries inside. Huge mistake on my side. It's very difficult to catch them here, but I have to do it because the tank is simply too small for them. So by the time you're watching that video, they are probably already moved. Overall, I really like this tank. I mean, I like black water tanks in general, so tanks with a little bit darker atmosphere. There is just something special about them, because they look very natural, something that you can actually find in the wild. And this one creates great contrast with this Iwagumi below. There are no algae problems, plants and fish are doing very well, so I have zero issues with it. And talking about issues, we move to the next one. When you look at this tank, it looks good. Plants look healthy, it's clean, water seems fine, you wouldn't say that there is any problem with it. But I don't like it. I just don't. I have to say that it's probably my least favorite at this moment in the entire house. And I think that fish don't like it as well. And unfortunately I did have some deaths here. And this is very rare for me. I'm mentioning this because I'm honest with all of you. I was happy with it at the beginning, but I think that I made a mistake by constantly changing something inside. I added some plants, moved few rocks, and I just overdid it. I even have problems with recording it properly. Look at this flickering. It's like this tank is haunted or something. In general, this one is the candidate for a full restart, even though it's only 6 months old. I think I just have to do it for the sake of the fish. I mean, the fish are the most important thing. But luckily, right above it, I have one of my favorites. This nano cube is everything that the previous tank isn't. It looks fantastic, it's very healthy, it's small enough for me to move it from one place to another. Okay, right now it's a little bit overgrown, but nothing that small trimming session cannot fix. Just look how incredibly healthy those plants are. And the rocks, they look like they are new. You will not find a single sign of algae here, even though it's around 6 months since the start. I just absolutely love this one. Right now, there are those chili rasboras that I moved from Iwagumi, but they will end up someplace else, because this cube is really meant for shrimp. So, if you are looking for a great decoration for your desk, check out later a build video for this one. It's super easy. Now let's jump quickly to the bottom. Here, I'm preparing my new project. As you can see, there is not much here yet. But, I can give you a heads up. It was inspired by one of the comments you gave me. So, maybe it's something that you suggested? Who knows? This is why I like when you're sharing your stories in the comments, because I also take inspiration from them. Ok, but let's move to the next one. Prettiest? No, probably not. The cleanest? No, probably not. The cutest? Oh yes. This is what this hobby is all about. Putting a smile on your face. And how can you not with those guys around? They seem so happy in this tank. It's Anubias only build, so I keep the lights on the lower end. 
So there are no problems with algae, it's very stable, it requires almost no maintenance. And there are even some guests here, like this guy that I found in my other tank when I was taking it down. Where did you come from? And if I remember correctly, when I was building this tank, I told you two things. That I wanted to stay with me for a bit longer, and it's already 10 months old, and I'm not planning to take it down. And second thing was that I want to see if those quarries can breed in here, without my intervention. And there you go! How cute is this little guy? And there is another! I was finding a lot of small pandas in this tank, so I just cannot be happier how it turned out. So this tank is working great, it's very easy to build, definitely something that you can try if you are just starting with fish keeping. Right next to my Cory Dreamland is my work in progress tank. This one is still cycling. We are in the classic diatom stage, so there are no fish in it yet. It's working well so far and I think it has a lot of potential. I don't want to reveal too much about it, because I will probably come back to this tank quite soon in a separate video. And right above it, there is another project in the making. But this one, well this one is different. It's going to be something that you really don't expect. I mean I have a crazy idea for this, something that you probably haven't seen before. If it works, it will be a revolution. And if it doesn't, it will make me look like an idiot. Either way, if you don't want to miss this one, consider subscribing, it should be fun. And now we are moving to the bottom of this wall, where you can find this nano tank. You haven't seen this one, because it's just my fry holding tank, and I wasn't making a video about it. Right now there are some guppies and a beast of fry inside. One of the last baby fish I have left. But like I said, I have more breeding projects in planning. Some of you know that I don't really like empty tanks, so even for my fry tanks, if it's possible, I try to at least include some driftwood, easy plants, so basically create any kind of aquascape. And I think that this one looks really okay for what it is, and those tiny little fish are quite happy in here. Right next to it is my tank number 10. I call it a bad start tank. I mean it did have really bad start, but right now just look at it. It's absolutely wonderful. Plants are growing back after some initial problems. It's very green and amazingly clean. I don't have to do anything in this tank and it just looks like that. This one is definitely the easiest tank when it comes to maintenance, because besides feeding the fish, I really don't do anything here. This scape is built from few cereal stones and big spider wood piece. And as you can see, it's just filled with java ferns, and one Anubias as final detail. Right now there are a few harlequin rasboras inside, and they are just doing great. Those are the same fish that I showed you in my rasbora breeding video. So as you can see, I made my promise and I kept it. They got their bigger tank. You know, I can't believe that I have 10 tanks in here somehow. I think I just didn't realize that. It's especially important considering the fact that I have all those tanks available and even more projects are already in planning. And this is exactly what I meant when I'm saying that this room is constantly changing. But we are not done yet, we have to mention one other setup, the biggest one. 
my chiclet dream tank. This is currently the only tank that is running in different room. I recently released a video about total restart of that tank, after the old setup was running here for almost 3 years. This one is the main decoration of my living room and it's built into this cabinet. It's based on huge serious stones and driftwood pieces. All the plants that are inside are epiphytes, so java ferns or anubias. It was designed like that because of the fish that I want to keep here, bigger chiclets. They need a lot of swim room, but also hiding places. They tend to dig through substrate, destroy stem plants and so on. This is why this tank was built in a very specific way to accommodate for the needs of those chiclets. But just because it's a chiclet tank, it doesn't mean it has to be ugly, right? It's actually quite the opposite and I absolutely love how it looks. And I hope that you like it too. And we are back in the fish room. And as I said at the beginning, I hope that I was able to convince you that having multiple aquariums is not that scary. It doesn't cause constant mess, it doesn't smell, and it can actually create something beautiful. And I do hope that this video was enjoyable to you. If it was, please hit the like button. Because I am wondering, is this something that is interesting to you? Do you want to see more of that kind of videos? or maybe regular updates about this room, or is it just boring? Let me know in the comments. And finally, let's have some fun. Let us have a vote and see which tank you like the most. You can type the name or just the number in the comments. I will try to aggregate them and post the results later. I'm crazy curious to find out. But for now, thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one.